session is going to focus on grade two standards that align to operations and ways that you can use the place value disk. Uh, within your standards, it says that kids have to fluently add and subtract within 100. So if that has to become fluency, we would not use place value disk. One of the standards says that you should be able to add and subtract where anything is uh, could be unknown. That could be your starts unknown, that could be your um, change unknown, and it could be either your sum or your difference. Um, let's start off with a problem. And um, for purposes for this one, I'm just gonna write this on, on paper. So what if we put this 17 plus what number is going to be equal to 20? And of course, you've talked a lot in first grade about the equal sign, so let's represent 17. And at this point, kids should probably know that 17 is comprised or decomposed of a 10 and seven ones. Notice that I'm putting my seven ones like a 10 frame because I want kids to really begin to think about supertizing the five and knowing that seven is five and two more. So there's 17. So I'm trying to get to this magic sum or the final sum of 20. So if I already had 10 and I already had seven, we know that 17, 18, 19, 20. So by adding three more, it got me to that sum of 20. Now here's where you can hit some high ceiling questions. How do you know that this is 20? Well, you're saying, well, that's 110 and 10 ones. Well, what's the same thing as 10 ones? Oh, that's a bundle of 10. So we really could take this bundle of 10 away and trade it for 110. So that could become two tens. So what you're having a kid here do is actually decomposing 20 into different forms. So even if I ask them, well, what if I traded this 110 for all ones? And what if I traded this 10 for all ones? Well, that would be the same thing as having 20 ones. So 20 ones, 110 and 10 ones, and two tens, those all still make 20. And that's a really, really good activity to help kids understand, uh, or I think a deeper understanding of the base 10. Okay, well, what if we had this one? Because remember, you can have any unknown also in a subtraction problem. So this one says, what number would you start with, take away 12, but end up with 10? So here's what I'm trying to end up with, 10. And pretend I'm taking away 12. Well, in order to take away 12, there had to be 12 there for me to take away, and 12 is decomposed into a 10 and two ones, but that's decomposition by place value. So now we're looking at 22. So if I had two tens and two ones, the standard form of writing these as numbers is 22. This is a great, great, great opportunity here to say, okay, kids, now that we think that's the answer, let's check this and make sure it's the answer. If you started with 22 and you removed 12, 10, 11, 12, did you indeed end up with 10? And that also reinforces another standard that says that the second grade students have to know the relationship between addition and subtraction. Likewise, on this first problem, we could say, well, if 17 plus three was 20, that means if I started with 20, I'm gonna erase these off, and I took away three, then you go, well, I don't have three to take away. Well, let's move this 10 and exchange it for 10 ones, which I'm gonna set that up as a 10 frame. And, you know, hopefully by now kids know five and five is 10. And so they'll probably be able to do this really, really quickly. And now I can remove three of course, that was just reminding me how many I'm putting. And here's the three that I removed. So what did I end up with? 10, 5, 6, 7. So 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. In your standards, it also says that we are to add four 
two-digit number. So let's just take a look at this. Now, this is not going to be anything different uh, from really just adding to find a missing sum. Um, so the first thing, we're going to represent 21, and 21 is comprised of two tens and one one. Then we have the number 11, which is one ten and one one. Then we have a 10, which is just 10 and zero ones. And then we have 30, which is three tens. And I'm gonna put the third one up there because I was making like that 10 frame. So now we're just simply supposed to find the sum of this. So if you call a mad, you start with your ones. You have two ones. Now go to your tens and add all of your 10 columns. Again, reinforcing that this does not mean 10 tens. This means one disc, one disc, one disc. So sometimes just turning this over, if you see kids that are struggling with that, I can see there's seven of those tens, seven tens. Well, what's the standard form of writing two ones, two? What's the standard form of writing seven tens, 70? So 70 and two is 72, which is this answer, okay? Now, we're gonna move on to another standard, which is we have to be able to add and subtract three-digit numbers. So for this one, I'm gonna go ahead and use our actual standard uh, form over here. So the first number is 119. We're going to add that to 231. So addition means, what are we trying to find? What is this called? It is called the sum. So we're trying to find the sum of 100, 110, and nine ones. Okay, so I'm gonna quickly build my 10 frame. How many, do I need a full 10 frame? Well, how does nine compare to 10? Oh, it's just one left. One left would be nine. Okay, and we're now going to add that to this add-in, which is two more hundreds, three more tens, and kids will put these anyway on here, and one more one. Okay, if you're gonna call them add, which is traditional algorithm, we're gonna add over here, and I go ahead and have the kids write down 10 ones. How many tens do you see? Four tens. How many hundreds do you see? Three hundreds. Okay, what do we know about this? Oh, it's a bundle of 10. When we get a bundle of 10, that means we get to trade that bundle for another 10. So all of these go away. So now we have 300, we have five tens, and we have zero ones. Do you think that those are exactly the same amount? Yes. Now go to the standard algorithm and notice that this is also green. Matches your one, so add your one column. Nine plus one was 10. Yes, you can have kids go ahead and write the 10 in, and then they think about this. Oh no, that's a bundle of 10. That means I get to take the 10 over to the yellow column, which was actually the action that I did. Now let's add our yellow column or our 10 column. One 10, two 10, three, four, five tens. Five tens. Now let's add our orange column, which is our hundreds column. One 100, two, three one hundreds. So this answer then is 350. Okay, now let's work one subtraction just to show you how that works and how the regrouping versus the trading goes. And again, I'm gonna use the mat over here because I think it's a really good way to look at traditional. Okay, so we're gonna start off with the number 104. This time we're going to take away 38. So what will my answer be called? Difference, so I'm finding the difference between 104 and 38. So let's represent 104. So that would be one 100, no tens, and four ones. Now I'm wanting to literally take away from this group 38. Well, if I wanna take away eight ones, I don't even have eight ones here. So what might we do? 
Well, I can't take a 10 and move it over because I don't even have a 10. So I'm gonna take this 100 and rename that 100 as 10. So how many 10s do I need? Well, there's that concept of I will need 10 10s. And this, again, totally reinforces the base 10 number system because every number that goes to the left is 10 times larger than the same number to the right in the place value, which is our base 10. So let's make sure this makes 100. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, or 10 tens. So I'm gonna take this one away now because I traded. Okay, now do I have eight ones? No. So I can move a 10 and then I get to trade it for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. So now I traded that for 10 ones, which is the green. Now can I remove eight? Yes. And you may have kids say, well, let's wipe out this five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so I did that. Now I have to take away three tens. One, two, three, three tens. So what do we have left? We have one, two, three, four, five, six ones. And we have one, two, five, six. So six is really just one more 10 than five tens. So six tens. How do you write six tens as a standard number? 60. How do you write six ones as a standard number? Six. So 60 plus six is 66. Now, when we go back over to here, this is where it's gonna become interesting for kids to really understand. Remember, we only had four, we couldn't take away eight. So we wanted to go next door and take a 10 and exchange it, but we didn't have a 10. So we went all the way over here and we changed that 100 into 10 tens. And I think you might would probably write it up there, okay? So now I can take one of those tens and make it a nine and trade it. And now I have 14. So we started with 14. And remember when we moved, removed eight, we ended up with six ones. And then we had those nine tens here and we removed three of those tens and we ended up with six, which the difference is 66.